E2, one. And? And then lastly, for the podcast. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, camera keeps Dude. falling over. That's camera good. keeps falling over. All right, somebody's going to have to hold on to that. You know what? It's just my thing is really big. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I, I couldn't help but laugh, dude. I couldn't help but laugh. Hey, man, got to got to Michael Scott it. Got to Michael Scott it. <laughs> All right, we're going. Whoopsie, stop. <laughs> Live for the podcast. All right, here we three, go. Three, two, one. Welcome to another episode of Business Bros. All right, I love the I love guest it participation. Does yeah, dude, I, my I, favorite. I, do you like I got the no Instagram pitch, video? Bro. <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can go business, bro. Go. We're all good with that. Yeah, we get some people that do that, and then we get you know every once in a while we have a, a business a girls business girls guest. You know, mm-hmm. we gotta love that. So uh, we have here on the podcast studio today, Mr. Francisco quote. Pancho Lopez, yep. the right. greatest salesman in the world. The greatest salesman in the world. Self-proclaimed. But, Self-proclaimed. But you can consider it a fact. But if you are <laughs> thinking about it, right, if you if you you want to test them, hit them up. You need to set your house list or right, list right there. Yep. All right. Either there we go. We'll have all this co- contact we'll, info in the notes. Yep. And if you're watching this on live, you see his banner. You can just point right down to the screen. Boom. Right there. Right right there. there. I can't see it, but you can. All right. <laughs> there so, we go. by the way, Mr. Pancho here has uh, has dabbled himself in the podcast realm. So, yep. I keep pushing it, right? I keep pushing it. I was like, we got to be on your show. We got to be on your show. I don't really drink anymore, but I'll have Coronas with you guys that there day. You go. So, we're going to do that. So, I'm yeah. putting the pressure again. We need to set a date. We're going to have you guys. Um, we have availability in three weeks. Sweet. So, Perfect. three weeks, put it in the calendar. We're done. Jonathan, if you're watching, you're going to be, you, you, you got to put it in the calendar. There you go, so, Mr. Fisher. Yep. All right. Hit that's your job. <laughs> so All right. Be fun. So that's one podcast. And Coronas right? are fine, by the way. You just have to have plenty. Okay. That's fine. You know, that's there you the go. idea is. Uh, I'm, you know. I'm like a bottomless pit. They just keep going down <laughs> if I start. So. Good. <laughs> that's work. the trick. That's the trick. Yep. So, okay. So that's podcast number one. What about the other one that just kind of tentatively launched today yeah so actually i'm really excited uh, i was able to i've been working on it for a while i've been creating some content on youtube and stuff like that but have really the learning curve of going through creating an rss feed and doing oh, all yeah. that stuff people don't understand how complicated this whole podcasting is it's like <laughs> at least the it's setup like right it's the setup you have to have all kinds of stuff and just to make sure that it's pretty decent quality and yeah, stuff like yeah. that uh, you want to make sure that your content that I consider very valuable to be delivered in a powerful way and clear, yes. crisp, all that stuff. Just like you guys. You yeah, guys are sound, pros. Sound yeah. has to be good. Video has to be good. Exactly. Right? All, the, exactly. all the different things. Yeah, it takes a, it so, takes quite a bit. So, yeah, we uh, I was able to just do a one-minute clip of me talking about some comps on a real estate, uh, about a real estate house or whatever, and I just used that as the kind of like the teaser, I guess you would call it, just to launch it. Make sure that it goes everywhere. Um, you guys can look it up. Start subscribing. It's called The Great Podcast. The Great Podcast. See, easy. I like yep. it. The, greatest, the Great Podcast the great by the podcast greatest salesman, salesman in, in the world. world. Yeah. It's perfect. So it's a whole new rebranding for this year. Um, my team is rebranding from the Poncho Real Estate Group because I've always been a fan of the name Poncho. Yeah. Uh, but I did quickly realize that $2 million uh, properties have a tough time working with a guy, with a named, guy named Poncho. Poncho? <laughs> Fair enough. So and you, you capped know what? yourself. It, it wasn't it wasn't my, my my own thing. It wasn't like a limiting belief. I went after them. It, yeah. it was a pretty genuine problem. So did you get like feedback from them? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. I mean that's yeah. vital to so, know, right? I mean, that is what it is. <laughs> it, uh, how often do you so. do that? Like if you go on a listing appointment you don't get it, do you follow up and say, "Hey, I just want to know. I'm curious." All like, the time. What could I have done differently? Yeah. Well, absolutely. That's critical if you want to succeed. Um, in fact, in the last episode, we were talking about um, sales skills and sales cycles and stuff like that. And part of it was going through negotiations and things like that. And I asked Jonathan, I'm like, Jonathan, what is the biggest, the best way to learn when it comes to negotiations, when it yeah. comes to business? And you got to fuck up. Yes. Y- you got to fuck up and get feedback and then learn. Yeah. Uh, well, a, a lot not only mess up, but get the feedback. Get the feedback. Because exactly. sometimes you mess up, you don't even know you messed up. 100%. Right? Like if you yep. never even got to the seller and said, hey, by the way, why didn't, you know, what, what could I have done better? Yep. You would have never known that it was Poncho. You just been like, I guess I didn't get that one. I it guess is, I didn't get that it one. It is what it is. It roll, is yeah. roll over to the next. But. What? Um, yeah, definitely. Which, super which a lot of people do that, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people are afraid to ask some of those tough questions. Like, well, I, I put on a seven step listing process training. One of the questions that I, that I have real estate agents always ask is, are you competing? Are you interviewing other agents when you go to a listing yep. agent? It's a tough question to ask. You feel like, oh, I don't want to ask that. I'm scared. Whatever. You have to know. Always ask it and ask who. 
Yes. And pull up the record. Yes. And show up with the record. Yes. And then just beat them up that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those pre-qualification yeah, things, absolutely. right? You actually you have, have to, to make it. a phone call and ask yeah. a tough question. Yeah. No, it's tough, dude. And, and then if you do take an L, always ask. Why? Yep. What can I have done? Right? And it's okay to take an L. You're not gonna you're not gonna win them all. No. And there's some that you even don't want to take, yeah. honestly. After you, know? you meet them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you decide and sometimes but, you get those. <laughs> yeah. I, I learned this a long time ago, man. If they're uh, a level a level three or above an asshole, we, I don't deal with it. I'd yeah. rather mm. not the peace of mind is, is You don't not want to stress out, right? Absolutely. It's already a it's all it can already be a stressful business in and of itself. Yep. With things going on, with deals falling out or, you know, appraisal issues, inspection issues, whatever. You're already dealing with a bunch of stuff. Hundred percent. If you gotta deal with somebody, you know, and, and kudos to those people who can because yep. hey, those deals need to close too. Yeah, absolutely. But, but at least if you're if you're generating, you know, if you generate you don't have to tolerate, right? Yeah, that's, that's what we like. Fairy thing. I love right? it. And so yep. and so that's one of those things that you get that choice at that point. If mm -hmm. you have a couple listings, if you're working with a couple buyers and you do happen to go to a listing appointment, the guy's a jerk. Well, that's okay. I don't, I don't have to work with you. Right. Totally you're, acceptable. You're still going to have food on the table. You're still yep. going to, your bills are going to be paid. You're good 100%. to go. All right? yep. Yep, yep. Yep. So tell me a little bit. Why, how'd you get into real estate? Why real estate? So if, if you want to talk about real estate specifically, I dabbled in it at a very young age. Um, I was very fortunate. I actually have a great story on how I started in real estate. Uh, because of a mentor and friend and sales manager that I worked with at the time selling cars. So I was 19 years old. I was uh, working at a car dealership and this dude comes over to me and said, I was about to get married. I got married super young, started having kids super young. <laughs> um, and this dude comes over, his name was Luke. Actually, his name was Mike Lucas, but everybody yeah. called him Luke. And this dude comes over to me and says, Pancho, you need to, you need to get into some debt. You need to buy a house. You're gonna make more money the moment you start accruing some debt and, and start. Now, I was you have living with my parents, right? yeah. having some obligations. And I was 19, and I'm thinking, okay, I'll get married. I'll rent a one thousand one thousand uh, dollar a month vehicle, little thing, and and one bedroom, and that's where I'll live, and and be it'll set. be fine. I'll yeah, be fine. Good. I'm going from my parents' house to getting married to this. I don't want to bring on all this uh, yeah. huge responsibility like, on top bro, of me, I, right? I got a plan. <laughs> yeah, and he's all, no, you need to buy a house. You can do it. You make enough money. Just buy yourself a house. I'm like, I don't want to. And he just insisted and insisted to the point that he actually brought in a real estate agent and a lender to the dealership and had him sit at my desk. And he told me, if you don't talk to them for 30 minutes, you're fired. <laughs> oh, okay. <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> so when I you said, put okay, it that fine. way. <laughs> so I said, okay, fine, whatever. I'll sit with these guys, right? So I sat with them and sure Convinced enough. Convinced that you were going to say no. Yeah, yeah. But these guys were good <laughs> and they knew their stuff. And they were they were his agents and his lender, obviously. Mm -hmm. He knew a lot about the real estate business. Uh, he invested and, and things like that. So he pushes me into doing this. Um, I said, whatever, fine. I get pre-approved. I start shopping for um, for a house. And I wanted to keep it under $140,000 at the time because... Yeah, I didn't like, want, I don't a, want big a big payment. Deal. Yeah. yeah, I don't want a big payment. And even though they approved me for like three fifty, I didn't want it. You you're know, like, no, like, no, no, keep it low. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I was, I, I was just scared. Nineteen years old again. You know, I was like, shit. So um, I started shopping, shopping, shopping. I found this place that was cockroach infested, um, and it was disgusting. Like <laughs> this literally, is the one. <laughs> this is it. It was, <laughs> it was the cheapest one I could find. It was one hundred, hundred and twenty nine thousand bucks. And uh, literally, when we ripped off the carpets. Everything when, ran away. No, forget about <laughs> running away. I wish they all stayed there. But the problem is, oh. was, seriously, this is going to be a little bit like a gruesome. TMI, gruesome for yeah. your audience. But man, I pulled up the carpet. There was still urine seeping through the carpet uh. from human. There was four families living in a two bedroom, one bath apartment. Oh. It was disgusting. But I got the best deal in town. Everything else that was similar size was selling for 180, 190. I got it for 129. Came in, literally ripped everything up. Out, um, and then um, we started uh, working on remodeling of the place. And I had a $1,300 payment on the thing, right? Including it's everything or whatever. All. Not bad. I yeah. was able to make it. Um, my boss, you know, at the time, Luke, he was right. He You're was like, totally okay. right. I started making more did you money. Have to, did you have to tell I him said, that? No, 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 no. I didn't <laughs> have to. He just knew. I, I he didn't even ask. <laughs> you know, but I was happy because here's the thing. I purchased that. It was 2002. So Beautiful 2001, time. I'm sorry. Beautiful yeah, time. 2001. Sold it two years later to the day, exactly two years later, and I made one hundred and forty-five thousand bucks on the thing. <laughs> That's right? it. So That's it. The bug years, bit you, th and that was it. That's yeah. It. Then You're, after that, you fell in love. I was like, "Shit, this is pretty cool stuff, right?" 
<laughs> let's do that <laughs> so, again. <laughs> yeah, this is not hard at all. And uh, plus, at the time, I had already been promoted. I was making more money. So I started dabbling a little bit more and more and more and more. 2006 rolls around. I started inquiring and getting more involved into the lending side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of learning uh, the, 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 the field of it. Um, started getting involved in some transactions here and there and kind of learning my way. 2009, um, I decided to just pursue it full time because everything, the shit hit the fan yeah, in 2008. Yeah, 2008 yeah. Lost everything. Like literally got to the point, and I'm sorry, I hit your camera. Oh, that's all right. Lot, literally, literally got to the point that I had to move in. Thank God I had been good to him as he was growing up as a kid because at this time <laughs> he was a lot younger than I was, but he had a house. And I had to move in with my three kids, one of them a newborn into my brother-in-law's little three-bedroom, two-bath house in Escondido because I had nothing, nothing. man. You know, it's but, funny how that works. Huh? When you're yep. young and you're successful, yep. you blow that shit. Oh, dude, I, I was 25 years old. I swore up and down. I told everybody that by the time I was 35, I was going to retire a multimillionaire. <laughs> you know, I was like... Sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Oh, we're, dude. We're there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same I mean, thing, dude. I, it was because it was easy, right? Yeah. Like you didn't think money. a downside was coming. You didn't. No. Uh, you didn't. You had no idea. No, you you were blind. I mean, I, blowing we're ten thousand, blowing ten thousand dollars on a weekend in Vegas. You know. Yeah. But, yep. <laughs> yeah, we did that. Yeah. We, we we went to Vegas and uh, came back with a property. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it was it was yeah. crazy times, dude. That's You're talking crazy. about the downside of the market, and that's when you decided to jump in. That's when I said, okay, because he, in 2006, I started dabbling into lending and everything, but I was still in the car business. Mm -hmm. I was still selling cars and everything. 2008 rolls around and it was like they shut off the faucet for both real estate and the cars. Yeah. I had a team of six guys. I was a manager. I had a team of six guys, an assistant manager. And between all eight of us, we couldn't sell more than 12 cars in a, in a month. Yeah. I mean, the, the money dried up. The lending it, dried up. There was nothing. Yeah. There was nothing. There was no banks financing any cars. Plus, we worked at the, we were, this was when Kia was barely coming alive. Yeah. So yeah. it was like people. Kia still, Kia still had a bad name at the time. Kia still had a bad name. And we, we even joked about it. We're like, man, you know what that Kia sign stands for? Keeping individuals away. Like, <laughs> nobody would stop. Jesus. People would see the sign and roll by. Keep going. We, yeah, we'd put all kinds of nice Hondas and Toyotas in the front line to yeah. just fool to people try, into yeah. coming in. And they'd see the sign and they'd take off. <laughs> so it's like, shit, okay, okay that didn't work. Against you. That thing's working against you. Yeah, it was, it was rough. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I, the car business was great to me. I learned a ton of stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, you talk about learning by trial and error Mm -hmm. and all that and all that and i gotta tell you in real estate the challenging part of real estate for anybody that's in real estate listening to this i guarantee you that your most difficult challenge you have is making that kind of generating that kind of experience by talking to enough people yes see in the car industry you go in um brand new you're a green pea they're called right you go in as a green pea and you start talking your first month you talk to 25 30 different people Maybe you sell, or maybe actually more like 60, you sell eight to 10 cars. So that's 10 deals closed in your first month without knowing nothing, right? Because people actually came there to buy a car. They're there to buy the car. And you have to overcome some objections and you just start learning. And then you hear the managers talking and you start getting the feedback from them as as the months go by. So now after six months of talking to maybe 60 to 70 people per month, you're talking, that's six times six, that's 360 people that you've talked to. You've maybe 400 people that you've actually engaged in a conversation of buying and sell- buying or selling a car. That's practice. Right? That's practice. That's and hitting that's your 10,000 hours pretty damn quick. Very quickly. Whereas in real estate, unless you're doing the, the, the calling for dollars and you're doing the expires proactive. and you're proactive yeah. or whatever, you're not getting that kind of experience no matter what. Right. So, so it was really a great, great, I tell everybody, you want to learn how to sell, get into a car dealership for, for six months to a year and work at it like don't think it's temporary like really really consider it like something that you're gonna really it's do like for college and it's the best sales school you're gonna ever find mm-hmm. i mean it's it, it's it, it's it's incredible if you're at a good store with good management that they actually engage you and treat you well and hold um, you accountable hold you hold you accountable big time yep and you so, trust the product yeah you know what the, the the product you you get to be so good at learning all the pros about your specific product that you learn to trust the product does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like it grows I, on you I like got, mold. <laughs> I got to the point that uh, when we were selling Kias, we learned to love Kia. When yeah. we sold Volkswagens, we learned to love Volkswagens. And 
and you drive the brand and you use it and you because you sell yourself on it you you're so you become so good at selling other people you sell yourself and you end up driving yeah, you the have same thing. to yeah, yeah yeah so how did you translate all of that into real estate um, so it was actually a pretty pretty easy transition so when i got into i got out of it in 2008 because like i said everything stopped i said okay time to go into real estate I already had my license. I figured, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just dive into it. When everybody's getting out, I'm getting, I'm getting in. in. Um, and I I worked really hard at it. And one thing that w- that is critical if you're barely starting in real estate, find a good mentor. Jump ship very quick hmm. if you don't have the right mentor. Quick to hire, quick to fire. Quick to hire, quick to fire, in the opposite direction. You know, <laughs> yeah. slow, like, slow to hire, quick to fire. Slow to fire. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Slow to hire, quick to fire. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's gotta be an off day. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But basically, yeah, you're, you you have to be very careful. As so, first, I joined a prudential office. I despised it. I did such a good job with one particular client, and they wanted to take away a huge chunk of my commission to for this mentor yeah. that we literally had exchanged two words since the whole time I was there. <laughs> and they're and I'm like, what the hell is it? Like you, you, and that pissed me off. So I left. Joined a Keller Williams office. Props to Keller Williams. They have a great setup. But I was at a very small location in Escondido didn't really there was no atmosphere there was no energy and there was nobody really mentoring you and telling you where to find the business yeah so it was a struggle it was it was a big learning curve for me trying to really get involved in that 2010 rolls around i get i get offered a really good position to go back into the car business which i swore i would never do but (laughs) but the money was right but the deal was good the pay plan was awesome and I was really struggling financially, so I said, I need to feed my kids. I need to get out of Escondido. The area that we were in wasn't re- was really not the nicest. My oldest son, barely in kindergarten, but that school was ranked second to last in the entire un- California. Yeah. In the you, entire state. You I didn't want, move. I needed to move, yes. you know. Um, so I said, okay, fine, whatever. I went back to the car business, killed it, learned to love it again. Um, I was there for another three years or so. Uh, to the point that I said, uh, actually, in that interval, thanks to the car business and thanks to everything that I had done at that moment, I was offered the opportunity to purchase a restaurant, which we did wow. um, in 2010. It was uh, actually, it's a great story, but uh, I think it's a little bit on the long side. I'll, I'll share it with you guys <laughs> another time. But long story short, um, I had a negative, I had a 400 credit score. I was overdrawn in my bank account about 300 bucks and I was able to purchase this this restaurant so so you know wow. where, where, so where the really bottom cool. is you were right under that i was under the bottom I was, <laughs> I, I was literally drowning in shit like it was bad i was driving around in um i had bought at the junkyard a um a pontiac i don't remember the name but it was kind of like one of those big pontiacs that looked like a Le Sabre, yes. like a like a buick yes. but it was a pontiac and it was it had red seats and it was a piece of shit but it got I, you from point it a was three hundred bucks, and I I needed to move. <laughs> yeah. So it, we used that, and and uh, I remember pulling up to the dealership at at that point, and then the people at the dealership were like looking at you like, dude, <laughs> you left and did yeah. what? <laughs> so it, it was it was challenging, man. It was really really challenging. Um, but um, at the same time, I, I've always been a guy that has a ton of faith mm-hmm. in. And, and a very positive attitude and books got me through it a lot. Um, the greatest salesman in the world, actually, one of the reasons why I use that name is because that book got me through a lot. Um, Tony Robbins, I became a huge fan of Tony Robbins and started listening to a lot of his stuff and reading a lot of his books. And it helped me out a lot to change my mindset and open up my, uh, open up my mind to see a whole other world. Yeah. Um, Cause and the, that sales, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, we, we said this already a little bit, but the sales transition from being a car salesman to being a real estate agent. Yeah. You learned a lot of skills from being a salesman, a car yeah. salesman, but the relationship difference in the real estate industry, it's another world. It's a whole different ballgame, yeah. right? Yeah. It's sales. Yes. It's sales, but it's different. I mean, yep. otherwise you would have been kicking some butt right off the bat. Yeah. And, and I think it also was had to do with the challenging times that we mm-hmm. were in. 2009 was rough. Um, but Absolutely. It's a totally different beast. See, in, in car sales, just like retail, if you're selling jewelry or if you're selling mattresses or furniture or whatever the case may be, people come to you. Yes. You're, you're basically at an eternal open house. Yes. 
You know, people are walking in, walking in, walking in. I like how you did that. Retail is basically an internal open house. It's it's an yeah. internal open house. Exactly. You know, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's a great analogy. It's easy yeah. to understand. It's right because yeah. that's what that's why people do and agents do open houses mm-hmm. because it's a good way to set up your storefront. Yes. You know, it's an open house is a storefront now. Absolutely. Like you're there and you're gonna generate some business from people that are walking in. Yeah. Um, you know, some people have office time or whatever. Maybe if you're in a high traffic area or something like that. Some agents have uh, stalls in the in, in the swap meet. Yeah, you know? kiosks, mm-hmm. kiosks, kiosks and kiosks stuff like that the at the mall. Whatever. Yeah, you know? um, I, I did a lot of coaching with Mike Ferry, so I'm kind of a little bit of against, against it. You know, mm-hmm. that's the the three ways to generate business. You know, what is you, Mike Ferry's three ways of generating? Mike business? Ferry's three ways of generating business is number one is you um, sit and wait. You know, just for whatever deals to come through, and that <laughs> not includes, a good strategy. Yeah, not a good strategy, but that includes office hours, office time, mm-hmm. some open houses. Even though open house is a little bit more proactive because you are at least setting up some signs. Depends and being on there, how you do it. Depending open house. how you do it, right. but yeah, you you, you don't want to do the setup, the, the sit there and wait. The other way is you can purchase the business. Mm-hmm. You can buy a bunch buy of leads. online leads and and everything, and that's great for the ego because you're going to generate a lot of volume. But it's shitty for the paycheck mm-hmm. because you're spending you're it spending all before so you mu- close yeah, the deal. Yeah. You're spending so much money up front, and it just doesn't make sense. Or you can go out and get it. You can be a proactive agent and just do your due diligence and 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 make your calls to your sphere of influence, make your calls to your expireds, hit up some fizzbos, go door knocking, be aggressive at talking to. As many people, conversations, conversations, conversations. Just get in front of and, people. And just get in front of people. A little bit of social media here and there just to be top of mind. But um, the, 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 biggest, the biggest thing I would say for me personally is the, just getting on the phones. Um, and that's proactive. And that's the third way. Your which team, is to go out and get it. Your team does a lot of uh, prospecting calls, right? Yeah, yeah. Instead of blocks? Yeah, we're, we're working on that exactly. Um, so my team is, we're restructuring a lot actually. And we started at the beginning of the year with this whole setup. And uh, point number one is we're focusing in, uh, on our sphere of influence. I have them all for one week straight, nothing else except organizing their database. That's all I want. Like just one week, nothing else is getting done. Just, just that. organizing your database. Putting them in list. Who is a COI English? Who is a COI or SOI? Some people call it. Yeah. Sphere of influence Circle English. Of influence, Circle of, of influence. influence. Yeah. Same thing. Sphere of influence English. Sphere of influence Spanish. Um, then you have your uh, VIP English, VIP Spanish. That's the way we have it set up in our group because most of us are bilingual. So we have our English and Spanish speakers. So we separate them by list. Then create a MailChimp account to make sure that those emails are going to be sent out in the right way to the right people in the right sequence, things like that. Uh, then today actually was the day that we talked about time blocking and we were very focused on you live and you die by your schedule, mm-hmm. you know, and that is the, 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 the key to success. You can, you can have all the dreams in the world. You can put a timeline to those dreams and turn them into goals. But if you don't take action, you take action, ain't nothing going to happen. Nothing going to happen. <laughs> so you can, you can either write out the whole plan. You yeah. can say, okay, cool. I'm going to do this and this and this. And it's and this. probably a but kick-ass you know, plan. It looks beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful. And yeah. everybody gets paper. excited about it. Yeah. But, but who's going to do it? Nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. So, so you really have to, um, uh, I learned one of the many things that I learned from Tony, Tony Robbins is, um, I went to a business mastery seminar and I love the way he presented the whole thing about instead of making a, a business plan, write up a business map. So the difference between a business plan and a business map is a business plan is very hard to alter. You just create a list of to do's to be able to get to that goal, right? A business map, you're just saying, I'm here, there's X. I don't give a shit how I'm going to get there. Like there's going to be peaks, there's going to be valleys. I'm going to have to build bridges. I'm going to have to build a raft and I'm going to have to go through that river. But I got to get there. But I got to get there. So it allows you to know, number one, is what your outcome is going to be and the reason, the why behind it. Focus on that, then you'll find your path. Does that make sense? Yeah, that totally makes yeah, sense. It's really cool. Yeah, um, and that's the Tony Robbins thing. That's Tony Robbins thing. I haven't yeah. seen that one yet. It's called uh, it's called business mapping. He he highly recommended if you guys get an opportunity to go to uh, the business mastery event from Tony. It's badass. There's so it's, many huge masterminds. You've yeah. been at Big Block, right? And, yeah. And one of the things that I've seen at Big Block a lot is uh, the trainings that they put on. Yeah, so it's I incredible. mean, right? And you were talking yeah. earlier about the different. Uh, brokerages that you went to yep so why big block what ended up happening so i ended up going from uh the keller williams office i i since i they were charging me monthly fees and i had gone back to the car business mm-hmm. i didn't want to be forking out money yeah, every if month if it. i'm not doing anything yeah. right so i found this uh bro- small brokerage that it was 100 percent commission and it was called i for you realty 
it vanished into thin air. I don't know what happened yeah. to it. The guy, <laughs> the market the guy ended up, actually, it's funny enough, the broker that was on there, the guy that hired me and brought me on board, and he was the CEO of it, ended up selling cars in Vegas, which was really <laughs> funny. <laughs> but he was a nice guy. And then he was, I just hung my license there for a few years. Mm-hmm. When I decided to just go at it full time and I quit the car business for good, um, and I'm not going to go into details as to why that happened, but there's a lot of politics in the car <laughs> business as well. And it got to the point that I said, you know, no, I'm done. The, the typical I'm done. just toss the tail yeah. like, fuck this. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Never coming and, back. And, this and I swear, I burned some bridges, man. When I left, I was like, you guys are all stupid. <laughs> I'm never coming back. You left you're like, damn, yeah. I probably shouldn't have left that way. <laughs> but in the moment, it felt so good. <laughs> yeah, so um, that was it, man. I just decided, okay, it's time to move on. I got into, car, uh, into, the, into the real estate world. And I started just researching a lot of different offices and see which one was might have been a good fit for me or whatever. Uh, shout out to Karen Vargas at Coldwell Banker West. She's uh, she's she's the manager at the East Lake office, mm-hmm. and I interviewed with her, and I really really liked her. Um, I really really liked that she spoke proper English and Spanish at the same time. She was not a pocha, and she was yeah. not she was not mixing words, and she was her her vocabulary on both on both languages very was very extensive. And for me, that. I don't know why, but it went a long way to oh, me. That's because uh, you're Pancho. Yeah, I think, <laughs> to me it was. I, I felt like it was a high standard that I liked, mm-hmm. and uh, I negotiated some 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 things with them or whatever, and I ended up joining with them. Great place. I did very good for myself during those years. Um, but then, as I started growing in my business, and I wanted to grow more as a team, mm-hmm. the structure just because of the franchise fees and because of all this mm-hmm. other stuff just didn't work. Right. Um, actually, too much overhead. They, well, they, that's too much overhead. And at the end of the day, they even have, and this is something that's really unfortunate for the big brokerages because like the, 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 the century 21s and yeah, the, the, brick and the, the brick and mortar places, brick and mortar places, because what happens is uh, they have these franchise fees and the Coldwell banker in particular, they have this thing that if you build a team, your franchise fee, instead of being, I guess, like 6%, it's like 8% or some crap like that. So oh, they gross. actually charge you more of gross. to have a team. Yeah. So it's like, shit, dude. You're, like, I'm trying to grow and expand. I'm getting penalized um, a little bit more instead of helping me out. And they did the best they could in terms of trying to keep me and help mm-hmm. me out or whatever. But at the end of the day, it comes the, out to the numbers. It, it came out to the numbers. And I knew, based just from meeting Sam, Sam is a badass i don't know sam yeah sam, sam. sam the ceo for big yes Boss. the dude's a beast uh super smart guy future billionaire absolutely there's no doubt in my mind he's gonna get there um and 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 i really like the guy and um i i could tell that even though it was a brokerage that was not like a traditional brick and mortar that they don't have all this big backing from a huge conglomerate or whatever mm-hmm. that they were gonna be able to give me something that other companies don't and which is a lot of insight, great relationships, and sure enough, some of the best relationships I've created in the real estate business have come from that place. Uh, as soon as I joined, just because of my production from Coldwell Banker, I was able to join the top 5% of the company, and it was it, it blew my mind. It blew my mind the amount of value that I got just from that because like, come January, I mean uh, February, we're going to go to Palm Springs, for example, for a two-day retreat mastermind, and all we do is literally sit with three, 30 of the top producing agents in the company in a, in a round table brainstorming about business and coming up with new ideas and what's working, talking what's about not what's working, working, what's, what's not, changing, talking about the market. Yeah. It's beautiful. Then in the summertime, we go to Laguna Beach and we go to the Ritz-Carlton and we hang out there for two days. Again, two days of nothing but masterminding. Which I mean, it takes your game to a whole new level. A, a whole new level. And the, the beautiful thing is, as long as you're producing, you're not paying for this. Yeah. It's one of those added it, perks, those it, benefits. It's they take care of you, right? It's mind-blowing. They're the rewarding of, you for being successful. The amount of value that they give. I mean, they do trainings live on Facebook every week. They send out the weekly emails with book, like the book of the week. They are always on top of making sure that they're providing the value that most brick and mortar companies just don't have. Have not. They yeah. don't have the revenue. Yeah. The, the 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 fee structure is too difficult. Yeah, it's just I mean, weird. the the yep. agents aren't as productive, and yep. that's going to be the big. I, mean, I honestly, I I wonder what it's going to be like for brick and mortar places as things change, as agents fall off during a shifting <clears> market. If it gets, I mean, it's not going to get anywhere near two thousand eight. At least I don't think. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. It, but when nobody does, has a crystal ball. Nobody has a crystal ball. Yeah. But it's going to change. And if we have that change. How are those companies with overhead going to compete? 
Yep. They're tough. They need to have good training sessions, good agents. They need to have created a foundation of producers that know how to uh, take advantage of a shifting market to survive. Yep. hundred percent. I, I see a lot of that at, uh, at your East Lake office, by the way. Yeah. And a lot of the agents that come out of there, they're, they've been, uh, they've been working it. Yeah. And, and you know what, that's where I met, for example, Jonathan, mm-hmm. who's a rising star, you know, like I'll, Kid's been in the business two years, yeah, and he's killing it, you know. But he's a hustler. He works hard, and he knows how to relate to people, and he knows how to create relationships with others and everything. So it's it, it's really cool. It's I was going to comment on that too. Yeah. That was one of the things that he definitely wanted to talk about was uh, the relationships that he builds and how he retains his customers. So that's yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah, he Huge. talked a lot about that in his episode, and and he and he does a very good job at it. Yeah, and does. that's how he's successful. Because, Teaches me some things. <laughs> oh, dude, um, him and I sit down sometimes. So it's funny how our relationship got started. Uh, we started it with the booze over business. We were talking mm-hmm. a lot, of, a little bit about it before the show started. But um, you know, we were sitting down in the office. We've maybe chatted like two times before in our lives. We're just sitting there hanging out, and all of a sudden I said, "You know what? Maybe it'd be a good idea if we just go day drinking, get super wasted, and talk about real estate live on Facebook." And he's all, hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so down. I was like, yeah, let's do it. So, okay, where should we go first? Oh, let's go to Cantina Mayawel. They got tequila there. Okay, cool. Let's go over there. And we, we just started going there. How should we call our show? Well, let's call it, it's got to have the word booze, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, it's real estate. Okay, so let's call it booze over real estate. And uh, I don't know if you caught that re- recently we rebranded yeah, to booze, booze over, over business. business. Yeah. yeah, it's just, we got to a point that we realized that um, there's only so many times you can talk about um, appraisals and inspections and uh, termite work, yes, <laughs> shit like yes. that. You got to expand. You got to expand it. And we wanted to provide a lot of value to our audience in terms of other industries mm-hmm. that um, we're bringing in, like restaurant owners. And we're bringing in, I'm going to bring in some coaches. Actually, next week, I'm having a Tony Robbins coach come on the show um, and uh, be on the show for an hour. He's going to do a little private. If you guys want, hit me up. Yeah, for sure. If you guys want an invite, he's going to do a private session for up to about 40 people in my office so if you guys want to seat there it's going to be next week and then after that i'm going to have him on the show so nice. i'm really excited about it. the guy's a beast um he's a strategist coach so it's all about building strategies for whatever it is that you're trying to do for sure, um, for so, sure. Yeah. Be in there. so yeah as long as our calendar's there we're there <laughs> awesome yeah it's going to be at 10 a.m so it should be it should should be doable cool um, cool but yeah uh, that's that's pretty much it all right, All right, so we're rounding the bend on time. Last little cool. uh, note of business. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and speak to everybody out there. How do they get a hold of you? And then who do you want to tag to be on the show next? Okay, so I think I, you guys have your board like really, really full. There's a <laughs> lot of people on that board that are going to be coming over here, but you don't have somebody that's a good friend of mine, and he loves providing value. I'm, I'm going to shout out uh, Alfonso Delgadillo. Um, I've had him on my show, but you guys need to have him on your show. I think he's going to be a great fit for you guys. Cool, Alfonso. Yep, Alfonso's a, a good dude. And uh, you guys can get a hold of me by going on Instagram at the greatest salesman in the world, which is right there, I think, on the little thing. Yep. And then uh, my phone number is the easiest way to reach me. I'm I'm literally the easiest guy to get a hold of. You send me a message, send me a text, send me smoke signals. I'll figure out a way to read them. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. So, yeah, reach out. Whatever guys you need, um, I'm here for you guys. Awesome, dude. Yep. And, dude, this story was pretty good. I mean, I, I usually do some talking, but you kept me silent. No. I just want to know more. <laughs> I want to know more. Tell me more. Yeah, I so, no. Sorry, man. No, that's perfect. That's <laughs> no, great. No, no, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what we want. We want, yeah. we want you know, that exciting yeah. stuff. We want to know the trials and tribulations because everybody sees everybody who's at the top, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And they think everything's, you know, golden and, and perfect at the top and, you never went through anything but yeah. when they hear the story like this is this is my struggle yep. right and somebody who's getting started can hear that and understand that okay it takes work i'm not gonna have mm-hmm. it right away it's not something i start today and i score tomorrow yep. i gotta actually take some l's and and, and learn some stuff and I'll, I'll get out there and do it so yep. i really appreciate 100%. you know you coming on the show and being vulnerable to yeah. share those stories i mean it, it means a lot I appreciate the the opportunity to be here and to share the stories. I think they do have a lot of value and I think they're really cool. Um, and one thing that I can share with you on top of that is that it makes the win so much better. Absolutely. When mm-hmm. when you're just on that uphill and actually on that book, The Greatest Salesman in the World, if you guys get a chance to read it, scroll number six, everything passes. And it's a very valuable lesson to learn. When you're doing good and you're freaking up there, don't get cocky and don't be an ass Mm -hmm. because guess what? It's going to pass. Yep. And then the crying is going to hurt even more. Yes. But if you're humble and you just keep at it and you provide value and you help others, it's the hits going to be so much, so much less, but it's going to happen. The The hits are are going to be there. The the ups are great, but the downs won't be as bad. Exactly. And then the other way around too, if you're on the down, 
don't cry about it. Don't be depressed because it's, it's going to pass too. Yeah. You know, it's this just seasons, man. That's, yeah, that too. Tomorrow will pass. the sun will rise. The this sun will too rise. shall pass. Yeah, exactly. All is well. 100%. Awesome. So it's good stuff. Cool. Well, yeah. thanks again for being on the show. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, Love you guys all. Appreciate you for, for listening. Of course. And then, of course, if you guys ever have any questions, you are interested in being in the podcast yourself, you can reach out, Hernan at csfirst.com, James at csfirst.com, or hit up hit us up on our on our uh, social medias at Business Bros Pod. That's all we got for you guys today. Peace. Bye-bye. Later, people. And I'm out. Thanks, podcast Facebook. Podcast video. Bye, Facebook. Later, Facebook. <laughs>